this is Chelsea from Paper Octio Studio and today I'm sharing with you a collaboration I did with the channel Mott Silk. Um, she has these cute digital files that she sells in her Etsy shop. The information will be in the box down below for the links to her shop and her channel where she shows all the different ones in this pack. This one is called the A to Z pack and it has 26 different girls in a couple different sizes as well as some extra little flowers and flourishes and things that she includes in the pack and you can purchase them to use in whatever way that you would want to use them. Of course I'm a mixed media artist so we'll be doing some mixing up of media today. I printed out a few of the pieces that I wanted to use. Well I printed out a bunch of them and then I decided what I wanted to use after that and I um, at the very beginning you saw a little tag that I made I made that first without the camera just to play around with a few different things and see how they work I know a lot of people really like to use girls faces in their art journal pages and projects and things like that and they don't feel comfortable drawing so this is a great way to pick up a few of these cute girls to use and then you can color them the way that you want you can collage with them you can make them on cards and tags and you could you know print them on uh, iron on transfer to you use on fabric I mean there's a thousands of things you can do with these cute little things and um, Macy at Mott Silk draws them and then she sells them so I'm just gonna show you a mixed media art journal page that I did and you can give it a try yourself. The first thing I did was I wanted to use that little banner that she drew so I made my caption inside the banner and I used a, a pit artist brush pin so that once I put any kind of wet media over it it won't run because those pins are made out of India ink so very permanent and I also um, before I did anything these these are just printed with my inkjet printer on regular copier weight printer type paper and so I used my two inch brayer and I went over them with some clear gesso. That is to seal it so that the ink that is from my printer won't run because that that type of ink does run and I plan to use wet media. So that's an important step. Make sure that you seal it with something. You could use a matte medium to seal it or a glossy medium if you prefer gloss or um, Mod Podge, something like that. Uh, even uh, white glue that you could roll over it or brush onto it. I, I use my brayer because I didn't want to have any brush marks. So that's why I use my brayer to apply it. You could also apply it with a straight edge, something like an old credit card. But anyway, the whole point is that I sealed the ink from my inkjet printer before I started doing anything. And because I was using the, the clear gesso and the only one that I have is the Liquitex, it's very sandy and so it gave me the idea to get out my pan pastels to color. Obviously you can use tons of different types of colors. You can paint these, you could color them with your Copic markers if you have those or your La Plume markers or whatever. Um, she does design them to be coloring pages so you can just print them out in color and not use them for anything else. Did you see that little boo-boo I made right there? I got some of the brown on the um, headset and uh, so what you see me there is is an eraser. You can erase pan pastels <laughs> as long as you haven't sealed them. So I just erased it. Isn't that cool? You can just erase it. So I'm just using my soft tools to color in my girl and I was saying that uh, I thought of it because this particular um, gesso that I use, clear gesso, is sandy and it, it's designed to, to make some tooth on your paper so that you can use things like pastels. And that's the only reason I thought of it. I haven't even used these pastels hardly at all. I got them at Christmas and I've, I did one page with them and then I pretty much haven't touched them since. So I did buy the, the uh, sets of tin um, palettes there that you see, the plastic palettes with lids, and that, that makes a huge difference. I sorted them by color, kind of by color families, and 
they, that makes them a lot easier to use, so I'll be using them a lot more. And one of the things I didn't like was they were stacked in those little, you know, screwed together stacks, and I could never find what color I wanted, and it took way too long. But in the that palettes, it makes a big difference. So it's uh, fun to color a little girl with those. Um, I bought the past. Well, I didn't buy them. I I got for Christmas the pastel. Um, the pastel ones are from the portrait set, which came with 20 colors, and then the other one is the painter set. So I ended up with 40 little things, but there's duplicates of about five of them. So I have got like about 35 colors of them. So now I'm going to seal it again, and I made a mistake here. I my my brayer was wet because I'd just thrown it in my bucket of water once I used it and I rolled it over that dirty paper towel and I got some turquoise from the paper towel transferred onto my picture. I was like, man, <laughs> why do these things always happen to me? So I'm gonna have to fix that later and you'll see me fixing it. So now I wanna make my background on my page. This is the small dilutions journal that I use. Um, I used them for a daily life project last year and then I never finished and now I put color and be positive in it and different things, but. I'd like to use this one up so that I can uh, start on another journal because it's getting to the point where it's hard. All the done pages are really thick on the one side, on the left side, and so then the undone pages are thin and then it get, makes the book unbalanced. It's hard to work in, so I want to use it up. So I decided to do this page in it. And also the sizes, the different sizes of the girls seem to fit this this smaller journal better even though I did print that one out even bigger than, than they come. So this is some music paper that has been stained with coffee. It was a gift from Katie. <laughs> a lot of my projects lady, lately have stuff from Katie in them. Isn't that weird? You know, I get new stuff and then I have to use it. <laughs> so um, she sent me an awesome package. And I'm using a old gift card to, to uh, make sure that the paper is flat. It's that thing that's got paint all over it because I use it for all kinds of stuff. So I'm just collaging these on. The medium I'm using is from Deco Arts. It's called Deco Page or Deco Podge. Uh, you could use Mod Podge or um, just a you know a, a mat, some type of a matte medium that you get from whatever company. They're pretty much all the same thing. And I'm just gonna collage these pages on, and then I've got some washi tape. I decide that I like that to use that color. Um, it would be like a light cobalt turquoise in artist speak, but it's just it's you know a light turquoise, and I decide that that's going to be a color on my page. And so this, these uh, used pieces of washi tape were sitting there, and then that roll was sitting right on top. And so I'm like, oh, I'll use these. So I'm just putting them on randomly here and there to add a little bit of color. And I am gluing it down with the same Mod Podge stuff that's on my, actually it's decoupage, that's on my brush. Because washi tape doesn't seem to want to stick. And even after I did this, there was a few little pieces that were, just the edges were peeling up and I had to glue them back down again. But then I get out some gelatos and I get out kind of a minty turquoise color and some yellow and some orange type colors which go well with that color. The mint one is a metallic but you can't really see that in the finished page. It just I was looking for that light turquoise which I didn't have exactly the color in the gelatos but I end up putting some of that other blue which you haven't seen yet on there and making it more the color I want. Then I start to blend it. At first I'm blending with a baby wipe on my finger, but then I then it's taking too, way too much color. So I just start using just my finger, which I'm moistening on the baby wipe and also cleaning it off as I go. Because otherwise I'd have all the colors mushed up. That's a technical term, mush. Mushing colors. <laughs> and then I'm adding again some of the color again in places to make it darker, like Basically, the orange goes in three places and the turquoise goes in three places where I want them a little bit darker. 
And this is just by feel. There's no plan to this. I'm just messing around, adding some color. Then I decide, decide to start collaging on my elements. And I'm using that uh, Deco Arts decoupage stuff again with my little banner. In the pack, uh, she has three different cute banners that you can use. You can write whatever you want on the inside. And then I'm going to cut out my girl. I'm sorry that I go off the screen. I'm always doing this when I'm cutting. <laughs> but I'm just trimming out all the white spots so that she doesn't have all that extra white. I could have just torn around it and not bothered with all the, f the fussy cutting, but I did it, so. What I mean is the white probably wouldn't have made that much of a difference if I just torn a had a little torn white edge, edge around it. It would have been quicker. So there's the girl. I can't remember off the top of my head what her name is right now. Ursa? I think she might be one, the one for you. They all have names with um, a letter starting with a letter from the alphabet. So that's why there's 26 different girls. So once she's on, then I'm trying to decide what to do. Should I make him more of her shoulder or does it just cut off there or what? So I decide I'm going to take this little flourish piece that was in the set and I'm going to make a little top of a dress or shirt, kind of a little decorative edge right there. So I'm coloring that with my pit brush markers, which are India ink. They're permanent. So they won't smear when I go to put the glue over the top. They're very nice markers. They're expensive though. Once that's cut out, I just um, decide to cut the end off of it because it's this really thing I couldn't cut around it. So I'll just draw it back in. <laughs> and then I'm just going to collage that on. There you go. Now she has the part of a little shirt or tank top or something just so she's not naked. Not that I would care if she was naked. Now here's where I'm kind of touching up with some acrylic paint where that smear of turquoise was on her neck that I got transfer from my brayer from the, the paper towel <laughs> that I was using. You know, remember that? I said I was going to fix it. <laughs> I'm fixing it now. And I'm just using some different colors of acrylic for that, kind of blending them together. There's a portrait pink and a titan buff and um, some Hansa yellow, just trying to match the colors of the the pan pastel that was on there. That's better. No more turquoise neck. <laughs> and then I just have this bare space over here, so I just decided to do a couple doodle flowers because I didn't feel like going and looking for something to put on there. <laughs> I suppose I could have put another girl, but that didn't make any sense, and I could have maybe made some big uh, music notes. That would have made more sense. And then I decide that the lines are not black enough. Now this was completely, un I, this was unneeded. I didn't need to do this, but it's just, it's just the way I am. <laughs> I wanted them to be blacker. So I went over all the lines on the printout with my fine tip Posca pen. It's just being very silly. This is the fussy stuff that I do that isn't necessary, but I do it. I don't know why. <laughs> she's much blacker now and then I decide to draw in music notes I figure that's probably a good background embellishment I, I could have stamped music notes if I could find a music note stamp I'm sure that I have one but I just was not in the mood to search through hundreds of stamps to try to find music note stamps so I just decided to draw them and then I start to go over my doodle flower, but realize it's not dry yet. Which will ruin your pen, so don't do that. You saw me scribble it off on the scratch paper to get the paint off of it before it got ruined, and I think I saved it. I hope I saved it. 
And once it's dry enough, I go over it again with some black scribbly lines. And then I get out my colored Poscas, um, an orange one and a light green. Shake those up. And I go over the flowers with those. Just very scribbly fast, just to add a little color. Green for the leaves, orange for the flowers, obviously. And then I got my splatters with my fan brush. You can see those in the close-ups, but not so much in the video. And then just a little bit of shading just on one side of her, just on the left side with my uh, water-soluble black pencil, which is a Stabilo All pencil. Same thing with the little banner, just a tiny bit of shading. And that's about it. It's all done. So thanks for watching and bye bye. Oh, and be sure to check out Mott Silk's links below. There's a video of all uh, that, that she shows all the girls. And then there's also a link to her Etsy shop. So thanks to her for collaborating. And that's it again. Bye bye.